What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart. And um, <sighs> how you feeling, Warriors? I'm feeling good. I hope you guys are feeling good also. Are we about to get straight into this? We're talking about Resident Evil 4 Remake. Separate Ways, a.k.a. Mommy Edition. Oh my god. Did DLC a god like? Yeah. So TLDR, DLC is 10 out of 10. They charge £8 for this DLC. They easily, easily could have charged £20 for this DLC. I've played worse DLC than this. Shorter DLC than this. Then they've charged £30. Unbelievable. Nailed it. Capcom are 100% the best gaming developer in the world. At the moment. They've been godlike. Since they released Monster Hunter World. They've been number one. Right, or I think Resident Evil 7 came out before Monster Hunter World, I'm not too sure. But if you look at it, yeah, they've released Monster Hunter World, Resident Evil um, 7, Resident Evil Village, as we said, Monster Hunter World, Devil May Cry 5, Street Fighter 6, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, Monster Hunter Sunbreak, Monster Hunter Iceborne. What is this? Resident Evil 4 Remake and Resident Evil Now, Resident Evil 4 Remake, um, Separate Ways, aka Mommy Edition. Yeah, and I'm sure they've released other games. Um, Phoenix Wright, um, the Mega Man games. They are ridiculous. The only game that they have fell short of the mark is Resident Evil 3. And they didn't even make Resident Evil 3. They gave that to a third-party developer. Very talented. Extremely talented developer. Yeah. But they are not about that Resident Evil life. Right? So they squandered the magical opportunity that they had to give us a Jill. Yeah? In terms of the remakes, this generation that we've got, Ada is number one. No one touches her. Nobody touches her. She's like the best character. Right? Because they didn't nail um, Jill. You know, I do love Jill more because I've been on the journey with Jill for longer. But Ada, she is number one best girl. Best Resident Evil character. I don't believe it. In this game, they show she shows so much emotion. But... She is doing a lot of expressive suppression. So there's, that's why it's micro expressions, right? And it's because of the engine that they use, the Ori engine, and how good they are at using the engine, how much they care, that you can see her emotions uh, through her body language, through her voice tone, through her subtle raising of her eyebrows and the way she makes her face and her cheeks and her mouth and just... Everything just fits so well. It's incredible. And the way she reacts to the world and the world events. Because she's a good person. But she has to hide her emotions, right? Because she is in a particular circumstance. And interacting with a very bad, evil organisation. Yeah, I mean, it's trying to infect the world. Global saturation. With Las Plagas, Ouroboros, the, the, the G-Virus, the T-Virus, right? Um, so, to me, that is a very bad organisation, yeah? And she's also dealing with Wesker, yeah? Who actually shows up in this game. That is incredible! And Wesker was never in Resident Evil 4. I mean, he was in Resident Evil 4. But he was only there in the notes that agents left. Or if people saw a certain, um, you know, people within the military, right, or 
Raccoon Police Department would see a suspicious character, they would be describing somebody, and that somebody would be Wesker, and there was some notes about Wesker, but he was in a submarine of certain reports, and Hunk's reports as well, yeah? And that's the only way you know Wesker was there. But he was in a submarine and he was in the shadows. He never showed up. In this game, he shows up. 90% of this game is completely new. It's retold in such a godlike way. Oh my gosh. The cutscenes... The events, I love this. I, I like this DLC more than I like the main game. Free! The adventure, the grappling hook. First of all, let's get this right. Um, let's get this out right now. She is Mikasa from Attack on Titans. You can see that they saw an opportunity. Yeah, Ada, short black hair, red. Super hot, awesome, cool, strong character with a grappling hook. And she can fight a giant. Why don't we just make this, why don't we do a little homage to Attack on Titans? And they do it and it is awesome. Bro. And she can use her grapple hooks on the enemies. She do her certain attack. She can use her grapple hook. 10 out of 10. Godlike DLC. Cutscenes are amazing. And it's not just a cutscene at the um, beginning of a chapter. And the cutscene at the end. There's certain events that will happen during the chapter. And then you will get like a cutscene. And it's not like a little 4 second or 10 second or 15 second cutscene. You get like a proper long acted out cutscene where you're seeing facial expressions. And that's the something that's really prominent in this DLC. It's the acting. It's the facial expressions. It's the character interactions. It's outstanding. And this is something you don't see in video games these days. Right? It's only very few video games that you will see... The characters acting in such a way. And it, that's the reason why a game like Devil May Cry 5 stood out so much. Because of the characters' facial expressions and the acting. A game like Baldur's Gate 3. The reason that game stands out so much as well as everything else that's in the game. is the cutscenes and it's the characters' facial expressions. The way the characters move. The way they talk. Their voice tones. It's proper... And a whole entire body of work. It's a whole package of just acting. Body language, facial expressions, voicial tones. The way they respond to certain characters or certain events. Ada, separate ways, does this. In the way she interacts with the characters. The way she talks. When I say talks, I played the game with the Japanese voice acting audio. I did not use the English one. That voice actor is garbage. I don't like it. I won't use it. In this one, it it's the it was the puzzle that made everything just click together. What an incredible story, man. What an incredible DLC. The interactions of Leon. There were certain things in the main game with Resident Evil 2 where certain situations just happened to fall into place for Leon. And it kind of like make no sense, but it is what it is. Like say, for example, towards the ending where he was on the, um, there was like the little speed craft that he was on, right? He got to that on the ending. It's just there, I guess. It's a Resident Evil thing. No. Ada saw the situation. She heard his situation, um, overheard it on the radio. And then she was on the, um... The speed, the little hovercraft, speedboat, like, thing that she was on, right? And she realised that, and then she said, okay, I'll help you out, Leon. And then she drove that, um, the craft to that bit, because that was the only part for the facility that they were in, there was, that was the only exit. And so she left that there for Leon, 
because he was going to get um, Ashley because they were in that facility, right? And there was other situations where there would be a cutscene with Leon. Ada was there. She just had, she was in that same facility at the same time because their stories intersected. And she overheard Leon talking to Ashley. And then she was like, okay, that benefits me. I need you to take out Kalsa. So I'm going to lead you a little bit closer to him, right? But you're not going to know because I've got my own mission to do. And you're just going to stop me because, you know, you're a boy scout. I I don't have plot armor like you do. I have to do things in my own way in order to survive in this world, right? And so she would set up certain things and it would be a cutscene from her perspective seeing Leon or an entire different situation that's going on with her while a certain event is going on with Leon, whatever he's doing. And then there'll be a cutscene where Leon and her meet and then it will make sense. And then everything just falls into place. Right? And then it makes sense with Leon's story and then Ada's story. And you're like, oh, so that's how it worked. That's why Leon was able to get past that. Or he, that thing was um, magically unlocked for him. Or those these things were set up. It's because Ada set them up for him. Because she's directing Leon in a certain direction to deal with a certain situation. That she can't deal with because she is dealing with this situation. So she's knocking out two birds with one stone by having Leon clear a path for her or deal with certain situations while she is doing that situation. And then she'll come there later to do her mission. Right. And there were like certain times that she would call Leon to direct him directly to a certain place. And she would, Leon would say to her, You really are a good person. I knew it. I knew, I see the actions that you're doing, but deep down, you're a good person. And then you'll see Ada's face expression, it, it, like, it hurts her, like, it pains her because she's actually being very manipulative, yeah? And she's using him. But she has to, right? And then she would, and then her, her voice that she'll talk to Leon, it contradicts her face because her face is pained. Yeah, she got a pained expression on her face. But she says something to Leon because she needs him to do that action, right? Which means that she's manipulating him. But he sees her as a good person because she's helping him out. But she's only helping him out because it benefits her to her end. In getting the amber to give it to Wesker to complete her mission... Which he's going to use for complete global saturation by infecting the world with all these Ouroboros, Las Plagas, T-Virus, G-Virus. It's amazing, man. Unbelievable. And Capcom know exactly what they're doing. Where they put the mommy, step on me mommy memes in there. She's 100% a mommy character. Right, like the just the camera angles, the way she talks, the way she interacts, the way you see her. Capcom know exactly what they're doing. They put all the memes, all the mommy memes in there. What an incredible character. 10 out of 10. Amazing interactions when you see her interacting with... And all her interactions are so cool. When she acts, interacts with Luis, when she interacts with Wesker, those interactions are great. God-like. The talk between Ada and Wesker is God-like, man. When he saves her, right, that she's about because she, she affected with the last plug us, right? And Wesker saves her and he's like, you're having a bad day. And she's like, I see that. Um, thank you. I have you. I have you to thank for this room, huh? And he's, he's like, get on with the job, right? And, and he's like, stop. Don't. Make me think that you are a liability. Prove to me that I was right in that you are an asset. And she's like, don't threaten me. Ease up with the threatens, with the um with the threats. And he's like, just do your job and get on with it, Ada. I'll contact you later. Just those talks and those it's like, got like and even when she betrays Wesker in the end. And he, uh, Wesker has an opportunity, basically, to kill her. He tells, he orders them, no, no, don't kill her. Ada's defiance is, it doesn't change anything. 
we'll get to her and, you know, we'll deal with her. He makes it seem like her insubordination was within the perimeters of his calculations. And she just needs to be shown and reminded whose side are you on? What are we doing here? Fall back in line. Did DLC too much? Godlike, a hundred percent recommend. If you haven't played Resident Evil Two, you should, Resident Evil Four you should definitely play it. And this DLC is worth it alone. Even if you don't want to play the main Resident Evil Four to get the game, so that you can access DLC. This DLC, I would recommend that. I would. And then that's gonna make you want to play. The Resident Evil DLC. Resident Evil um, 4. Main game DLC. But as I said. This DLC is better. It's incredible. Now they've added Wesker. And Ada to Mercenaries. Now I feel like I can play Resident Evil again. I feel like I'm back. I've got my Ada. I've got Wesker. Yeah, I changed my mind about Wesker by the way. He's godlike. He's godlike. He's broken actually. I played him when I was. You know, the first few hours I was playing the game, I wasn't feeling Wesker. Because I wasn't giving him a chance. I just really wanted to get my Resident Evil legs underneath me again. Get to play with Ada and then jump into the game. But I actually did play with Wesker and he's broken. He's broken. He's so... He's he's overpowered. He's overpowered. He's amazing. Amazing. So, yeah. That's all I really want to say about that. Uh, yeah. Incredible. Um, emotion in this game, amazing action, the stages are incredible, they all mean something everywhere you go, the interactions with the characters are cool and awesome, the weapons are godlike, the game does still feel like a gacha game, in terms of, it feels like an RNG there's a lot of random aspects to the actual game mechanics. But the game, her Ada is so godlike as a character. The story is so good. The narrative is amazing. And the whole the, the way the whole world is the story is told is so good. It nullifies it. So I still give it a 10 out of 10. Easiest 10 out of 10 I can give a movie um a video game. Even I mean it's DLC. But this, as I said, I've played full games that are shorter than this. DLC, expansion DLCs that are supposed to be more than this, that are not as good as this. And it's got a hell of a lot of re replayability. And now this brings new life to the main game of Resident Evil. So that's all I want to say about that. Warriors, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Uh, thank you if you tuned in and watched my live streams. And um, yeah, Warriors. I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.